10.5, polar area, continued, notes continued. Uh, example 4, find the area inside one loop of r squared equals 4 cosine of 2 theta. So this is um, the one type that we haven't seen yet. This is going to be a lemnus gate, and this is going to create a uh, figure 8. So um, we can also it'll basically look like an infinity, um, either um, right side up or sideways. And this will produ be produced when we have r squared is equal to. Right? So uh, we can sketch this out. If I choose 0, I'm going to get um, uh, square root of uh, 4. And then r will be square root of 4, which is 2. And then we can find our polar 0 here. Set 4 cosine of 2 theta equal to 0. Divide by 4. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0. Um, inverse cosine is 0. Cosine will be 0 at power over 2 and 3 power over 2. Divide by 2. First instance of polar 0 will be at power over 4. So we know that at power over 4, um, it will create a uh, it'll create half of one of the loop. So we can use um, our... Um, symmetry again. So I can just find the area of this and then make sure I double it. So 1 half integral from 0 to 4 r squared d theta. Now we don't have to put the squared out here because this is already r squared. So we got to be careful of that. So we only do 4 cosine of 2 theta. No need to, to square this value. Okay. Now let's see. We can just go through u substitution. Uh, 2 theta will produce a 1 half. Cosine of u cosine becomes positive sine, and then we just evaluate between our upper and lower bound. Upper bound will produce one half sine of pi over two. Lower bound will produce zero. Sine of pi over two is one. One half times four is two. So our area is simply two. Okay, let's look at some problems that are more involved here. Find the area inside three sine of theta. Now this is going to be a circle with a diameter of three. It's so inside the circle and outside this dimpled limason, 2 minus sine of theta. So let's sketch the uh, circle with diameter 3. This is going to be along the y-axis um, and symmetry about the, um, about the y-axis. So it'll be up um, the y-axis uh, 3 units. So diameter of 3, we have a circle here. 2 minus sine of theta, dimpled limason, um, because... Um, we'll never. Uh, this will never hit polar. Uh, hit the pole. So zero will start at two. Pi over two will go to one. Pi will give us two. Three pi over two will give us three. Two pi over two uh, will finish um, our trace back to um, our starting point. Now we're trying to find the area of this region here. Just the area that is inside the circle. Okay and the portion that's outside um, this limason. So it's going to be just this um, um, uh, heavily traced area here. So let's find the intersection so we can kind of, so we know where these bounds are going to be. So we're going to set these two um, equations equal to each other. Solve for theta. So 3 sine of theta equals 2 minus sine of theta. Let's combine the thetas together. 4 sine of theta equals 2. Divide by 4, we get sine of theta equals 1 half. So sine will be at 1 half um, at the angles of pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay. So what we can do is when we find the area um, of 1 half um, r squared, it will give us this entire region. Okay. So we're going to have to find this entire region first, and then we subtract out the bottom portion of the half circle um, using uh, the uh, the limason, so uh, but that will only produce half of the area, right? We have to make sure that after we find the, this area, we're gonna have to double it so we can also find the area of this region as well. So that's why there's a two out here. So this will give me um, the half circle, and then this I'm gonna be subtracting out um, the portion here. I'm going to um, now these all have the same bound, so I'm going to just try and com combine all this together. The two and one half will all cancel out. 
leaving us with just three sine theta squared minus two minus sine theta squared. Hey, we've done enough examples where we've done power reducing. This will probably be um, in the calculator portion. So if we plug this in our calculator, we'll get 5.196. You can either plug this in polar form um, or in function mode, uh, since um, just replace theta in terms of x, um, and this will work fine to get you the area. Hey, example six, find the area of the common interior between the circle and the cardioid. So we're trying to find this common interior, which is going to be this um, uh, this region here, right between the cardioid and the circle. Okay. And again, we're going to use symmetry again. We're going to just find half of the um, area and then make sure we double it. Now, here's the thing is that if we're drawing these radial lines, uh, we see that uh, from 0 to um, this intersection, this point here, okay, we're going to be using uh, the cardioid. But this sliver region, if we draw out radial lines, um, it's actually going to be hitting the other curve, this 3 cosine of theta. So we're actually going to need two separate integrals because we have separate intervals using separate curves. Okay, but first, let's find intersection. The intersection will be, um, so we set the circle and the cardioid equal to each other. 3 cosine of theta is equal to 1 plus cosine theta. Combine the cosines together, we get 2 cosine theta equals 1. Divide by 2, cosine theta equals 1 half. So cosine will be good 1 half at pi over 3 and at um, 5 pi over 3. But we're only going to be concerned about the first quadrant since we're only going to find the area here and then later on doubling it. So from 0 to pi over 3, we're going to be um, uh, finding um, the area of this region using the cardioid. And then from pi over 3 to pi over 2, this will handle... Um, the region with the circle. So here's our formula. Okay. Um, with the circle, uh, the first portion will be from uh, 0 to pi over 3, and that'll be 1 half r squared, and the second region will be from pi over 3 to pi over 2, and that deals with the circle um, 3 cosine theta squared d theta. Um, we can distribute the two uh, through to uh, cancel out uh, one half, and the rest we can just use our calculator um, to add together to get our area to be 3.926. Okay, our final example, example seven. A polar curve is defined by the equation r is equal to theta plus sine of 2 theta between 0 and pi. Find the area bounded by the curve and the x axis. So we want to find the area uh, between the curve and um, the x-axis. Well, let's sketch out the curve first. At 0, we're going to get 0. At pi over 12, it'll be this really shallow angle here, uh, which is, um, will probably give us something like 0.75. Right? This is not something that we recognize, theta plus sine of 2 theta. So if I plug this in, I'll get roughly 0 0.75. If I plug in 0.4, Pi over 4, that will give me roughly 1.75. Pi over 2 will give me 1.5. And pi will give me 3.14. So we see that this is kind of have, has a spiral effect. So if I want to find the area, simply 1 half from 0 to pi of my r squared d theta, we can use our calculator. We get 4.382. For b, find the angle theta that corresponds to the point on the curve where x equals negative 2. Well, here's x equals negative 2, so we want to find out where this uh, line intersects with this curve. So we can sim simply set up an equation to solve for theta. We want to find out where does r cosine of theta intersect with negative 2, right? Because these are both x equations. Well, r gets replaced with theta plus sine of 2 theta. So we can set up equation where theta plus sine of 2 theta cosine theta equals negative 2. Okay, this will be tough to solve algebraically, but we can use our calculator to find out where they intersect. Or we can just bring the negative 2 over to one side and just look to see where 
uh, this crosses the x-axis rather than looking for the intersecting point. So this will just um, allow us to just look, on, look at one place. So if we plug this in the calculator, this just plug all this under y sub 1. Look for the x-intercept, and uh, the x-intercept will be simply 2.786. Okay, part C. Between pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, d r over d theta is, ne is negative. What does it say about the graph on this interval? Well, if the radius, with the, the change in radius over um, change in theta is negative, that means um, the radius is going to be uh, decreasing, right? Uh, the radius is getting smaller. So if d r over d theta is negative, then that means the radius is decreasing and therefore the graph is moving towards the pole or approaching a pole in this interval from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. Okay, last part. At what angle between 0 and pi over 2 is the curve furthest away from the origin? Justify your answer. Okay, so we're trying to find, think of this as a max value. We're trying to find the furthest point away. So to find the furthest point away, we have to kind of think back about what we learned uh, a while ago, where we're trying to essentially find um, uh, the largest, the maximum value on the closed interval. And if that's the case, we have to use EVT extreme value theorem, where our candidates will be either critical points and endpoints, and, and there will be one of those um, points as, as our absolute max. So we know the endpoints. The endpoints um, will be 0 and pi that we can plug into the equation. So now the only thing missing is the critical point. Well, the critical point will be where the derivative is equal to 0, right? So we simply find the derivative of theta plus sine of 2 theta. Theta becomes 1. Sine of 2 theta becomes 2 cosine of 2 theta, going through chain rule. And now we set the derivative equal to 0. Cosine of 2 theta equals negative 1 half. Where is cosine equal to negative 1 half? Well, in the second and the third quadrant, so 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Divide by 2, divide by 2, we get pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Um, we have to eliminate 2 pi over 3 because that's outside of our um, interval. So our critical point that we have to test is pi over 3. End points we test as 0 and pi over 2. So now the way we test points is we just plug all these um, angles into the original equation and we simply look for the highest value. The largest value will be the point uh, that is furthest away from the origin. So if I plug 0 into, the, into my initial equation, theta plus sine of 2 theta, I'll get 0. If I plug pi over 2 in using our calculator, we can get 1.571, or just pi over 2. If I plug in pi over 3, I'll get 1.913. So between these three, the largest value is 1.913. So that means at pi over 3, the graph is going to be the furthest away um, on this closed interval. Um, uh, at theta pi equals 3, um, at theta is equal to pi over 3, and uh, the distance is where radius is 1.913.